Today we're going to go across the servicing and maintenance of the Rhinox HPX breaker range. So we're going to cover the greasing and nitrogen charging, any daily, weekly, monthly and any other periodic maintenance that's required for the upkeep of the hammer. So one of the maintenance points that should be done daily is the greasing of the tool point. So this is to lubricate the point around here and make sure it is not dry. This is to prevent wear to the tool point on the internal bushings. I'll now show you where to grease the tool point and it's just through this aperture here which is clearly marked with a sticker and an arrow marked grease. The breaker should be greased every two to four hours depending on operating conditions. The hammer should be in a vertical position so the grease comes down into the tool point and we're looking for grease just to appear out of the tool head here so it's no longer dry. If you notice that the tool does look dry, grease it before the two to four hour interval. It's recommended to use a molly grease which is recommended for this application which have the wear nippers in it to aid lubrication to the tool. So you can now see we've got plenty of grease around the outside of the tool and this is now ready for operation. One important thing on the hydraulic breaker is making sure the hydraulic oil is in optimum condition and also suitable for the application. So we recommend ISO VG68 in hot weather climates and also ISO VG46 in cooler weather climates. It's also imperative to make sure that the machine is full of hydraulic oil to manufacturer specifications because the breaker is a high flow attachment. It's recommended to change the hydraulic oil every 600 hours for standard life oil or 1000 hours for long service life and the hydraulic filters every one to 200 hours. This is to keep the breaker working optimally and also to make sure that the seals in the breaker don't perish or are damaged from any debris or dirt within the hydraulic system. When operating the breaker, you need to make sure that the cylinders are not fully retracted or fully extended. This is to stop the piston hitting the end stop here. You should make sure that there is a, a portion of oil within the chamber there as the impact goes through the arm whilst braking. As you can see here, the rod is fully retracted into the cylinder and this is going to send all the shock into the end cap of the cylinder and the pins and bushings. How we've got the arm now, this is ideal for braking. You could come a little bit closer into the machine, but as you can see, all the three cylinders are at mid-stroke and the piston is not all the way back. As you can see as well, the hammer is nice and vertical and straight. This prevents any stress or damage on the tool. If you've got this on an angle, it can cause the tool to bend and ultimately snap. As you can see in this orientation, the tool point and the hammer are on an angle. This is going to cause a lot of stress in the tool point around the end plate here and potentially cause it to fracture and break off around here. All the Rhinox HBX range are anti-blank firing or ABF for short. This prevents the hammer from being used without any ground pressure being engaged to the tool point. As demonstrated now, this will not operate in the air. We need to go down and apply some pressure to the tool point and then it can be used. In this section we're going to go across the nitrogen charging of the hydraulic breaker. So this includes releasing some gas if it's overpressured or topping the gas up should it need recharging. So what we're going to do for this is we're actually going to take the hammer off the machine we're going to lay it down onto the floor just for easier access. So first we're going to start with taking the hoses off. Now these are on quick release couplings. Um, obviously some machines may be hard piped. We can move them out of the way then and we can now lay the, the hammer down safely without the lines in the way. So this excavator is fitted with a hydraulic coupler which to operate the coupler the hammer needs to be curled all the way in. So it's just important to note and make sure that the breaker point doesn't come too close to the main boom ram on the underside. So we've activated the coupler now, the pressure's active and we can lower the hammer down on the floor. Now the brake is laid down, the first thing we'll do is we'll take the nitrogen charging cap off. Make sure that you're not, you've not got your head over this while doing it and wear some safety specs for extra safety. Once the cap's taken out, just put that to one side for later. Make sure you take the cap out and not the actual nitrogen charging holder. If you take this out, this could fire out as it is gas charged behind it. So in the refill kit, it comes with an extension piece. This is to reach into the aperture for the filling port. On some of the smaller breakers it's quite a depth that this has to reach into and then this is the refilling valve with gauge this is where the extension piece connects or in some cases you can fit this directly into the refilling port of the breaker you can see here as well you've got a little needle valve 
This is what is pushed down with the plunger to discharge the gas or to allow the gas to be refilled. And there is also the same setup in this extension piece. Make sure that this is actually inserted and it's not been damaged, broken off or removed or you won't be able to discharge or refill the gas. So on this particular model, we're actually gonna fit the extension piece to the um, gas refill kit. That's due to the short shank on the refill kit won't actually reach the port. So first step is we will fit the extension. Tighten that with a wrench. We'll now fit the nitrogen charging kit. Make sure that this needle here is fully extended and it fits by turning the hex on the top just lightly tighten the top with a wrench. Make sure that the end cap is on here and that this valve is closed and we can then depress this plunger. You can see now the pressure has gone up so we can now take a reading and determine if it needs charging or if it needs some pressure releasing from it. So to determine if the breaker needs some gas releasing or recharging, it is recommended that if it is 25 PSI below the manufacturer's recommendations it is refilled and if it's 25 psi above the manufacturer's recommendations that it should have some gas released. In this instance it's at 140 which is well below the 203 minimum so we need to recharge this breaker. So the Rhinox HBX breaker comes with a hose for refilling so this connects into a regular nitrogen regulator. It uses an 11 16th ORFS so O-ring sealing face coupling on this end which goes to the regulator and on the opposing end, which goes to the nitrogen refill kit, it is a 3 Apes BSP fitting. So before we remove the end cap to connect to the hose with the 3 Apes BSP fitting, we're just going to release the pressure that's currently between the refilling point and the gauge. This is done with the little side needle valve here. So we'll just gently open that up and lose the pressure from there. We can then re-tighten that, close it off. We can then remove the end cap. and we can connect the filling hose. So we can now set the pressures on the regulator for the bottle to fill this. If you wasn't using a regulator, you'd obviously have to monitor the pressure gauge here just to make sure that we're not over pressurizing the hammer. Now we've got the nitrogen line connected up, we can set the pressures on this regulator here and open the valve up to charge the breaker. So we can set that to 15 bar and then that's in the working window of the hammer and we can check our pressure on here before we remove the hosing. So now we recharge, we can close the valve on here and we can reverse the previous steps. So we'll make sure that the plunger is fully removed and we'll open the little needle valve just to purge any pressure in the line before we remove the hose. It's important to do this to make sure the hose doesn't fly off and cause any injuries. We'll then refit the cap just to make sure no debris gets into the filling gauge. So like when we're refilling the nitrogen, to take a read in, we fit the refill gauge and then we depress the plunger, which gives us a reading on the gauge. From this then we can determine if we need to remove some gas or not. This can be done with the small bleed off valve. Again, if it's no more than 25 PSI above the top manufacturer specification, we wouldn't touch this. However, in this instance, we'll just release some gas out of here watching the gauge until it goes to the desired pressure and then we can let off the plunger. As before, once the plunger is released, we will just open the small needle valve and purge any gas that's in between the refill point and the gauge and then we can remove the gauge. And we can now fit the refilling cap. We're now good to put the hammer back onto the machine, ready for operation. So once the brake is refitted, we will just release the pressure on the machine so with the dead lever down, we'll just position some of the controls just to take the back pressure out of the high quick release fittings. So we'll now reconnect the hydraulic fittings and we're ready for operation again. So the optimum operating pressure for this particular breaker is 90 to 120 bar. This will be mentioned in the user guide. So just check for your specific breaker to make sure that you're running at the optimum pressure and not over pressure in the hammer. Obviously that would damage the seals inside or lack of pressure would prevent the hammer from actually operating because of the rebound to the nitrogen charging. So one other important maintenance check is to check the torque specification on the through bolts which holds all the internals of the breaker together. So after 10 hours of operation, the bolts here, and there should be two on the front which you'd have to take the headstock off, 
they need to be retightened just after the initial use just for any settling down these should also be checked every 250 hours or if you see that the torque indication marks have moved after the 10 hour check it would be recommended to remove the torque marks and reapply some torque marks if the bolts have been tightened they will obviously rotate away from the original marks if when the gas is checked it's lost 25 psi or more within a 24 hour period it's likely that there's a gas leak somewhere so what we're going to do is we're going to spray some soapy water around the refill point and around here where the segments of the breaker are actually connected on the internals now this breaker being a smaller one is a lot more condensed and compact on the casing some of the larger ones has a larger opening where you could actually check for further gas leaks as you can see there's no bubbles on this one so it's quite clear that there's no gas leaks here before removing the tool we will rest the point onto a piece of wood this is just to prevent the tool from ejecting and falling so we can now remove the roll pin which holds in the tool point now the roll pin's been removed we can now remove the rod pin we can also then inspect this for wear we can then lift the hammer up now and we can remove the tool to determine if we've got any seal wear on this breaker we'd have hydraulic oil leaking from the bottom we recommend replacing them every 800 hours or when a leak is seen a leak could also be caused from the cross bolts that have not been torqued as well which we've mentioned earlier so what we're going to actually do here is we're actually going to check the wear of the inner bushings this is set out on the user guide for each different breaker model for this particular breaker it takes a 53 millimeter diameter tool and if the wear is above 57 millimeters the bushings need changing we can also check the ring bushings again the wear limit to these are set out in the user guide so we can now replace the tool what we'll do is we'll partly insert the roll pin this just makes it a little bit easy when we put the rod pin back in so it's also just just check which end is going in one end we'll have a chamfer on and one may be slightly bruised from when we've removed it previously so we'll just start inserting that and we'll be checking in the top just to make sure it's actually clear of the opening and we'll just check to make sure the rod pin can still be inserted we may just have to remove the pin ever so slightly so we can now reinsert the tool make sure that the flat is inserted into the rod pin area so on this breaker it needs to be turned around you can insert it here and we can then put the rod pin back in just check on the orientation of the rod pin groove to make sure that it will make contact with the roll pin once that pin has been partially inserted the brake can't come out and we can then go from un the underneath just to guide the position of the rod pin and we can just enough to hold the rod pin so we can get into a more comfortable position then to fully drive the pin home so for more information on the rhinox hbx breaker range check the video here for changing the tools if you've got any further questions don't hesitate to contact our customer service team